uh, for the purpose of this tutorial, uh, I'm going to be using uh, the still life that I set up with everyday objects. Uh, for example, if you use things like this, it would be perfect. Uh, the reason is, if you notice, there's uh, different um, materials, obviously, and the light is reflecting differently. Uh, remember that the more interesting the materials, uh, the better and more interesting uh, your drawing will be. And obviously, like if it's not all the same, you would enjoy doing it more. Uh, remember that uh, different types of paper uh, take charcoal differently. So to see which one works best for you, um, you can even try it on some different papers. Uh, obviously, which ones you prefer is going to be your preference. But keep in mind that depending on the quality of the paper, some might allow for darker tones, some might not, you know, some might smudge better. <laughs> keep these things in mind. Before I start doing anything with charcoal, personally I like to use a pencil to sketch around the general outline of the still life. Um, it, you know, you don't need to obsess about it. This part shouldn't take you more than five to ten minutes. If you find yourself taking much longer, start timing yourself and start putting perhaps a stopwatch or something maximum you should give yourself for this part is 10 minutes and you're a bit stretching it okay this should really be a quick part uh, because later on while you're using charcoal you'll be correcting certain things uh, but obviously just because charcoal is much more difficult to erase and remove completely than pencil and it's also thicker so it wouldn't allow for certain fine lines. Using a pencil to sketch around is, you know, usually convenient and uh, it allows you to move quicker. Uh, obviously, keep in mind construction lines. Uh, you cannot avoid these. The moment you start with charcoal, it's very difficult to go back. So make sure you do everything as needed. Once you have your sketch ready, then it's time to start with charcoal. Uh, personally, I like to use smaller pieces, that's why I'm breaking it, and use the edge to shade uh, along. Uh, obviously, keep in mind that just like pencil, uh, it's very good to shade kind of along the direction of the object. So if the object is uh, kind of straight in certain parts, perhaps you would want to shade along that. It would help with the form. Using the flat side also helps building value quicker. Okay, remember not darker, but we're blocking out. Um, so for example, in, in here, I'm kind of going along the lines of the cap of the... Uh, the paint bottle okay again you shouldn't be obsessing about details at this stage at this point you're kind of highlighting certain areas and blocking them out like for example here again I'm going to start blocking the tape out. Obviously keep in mind there's parts which are to be to remain white. Remember that the tape is even though it's white, we can see certain shades which are different values essentially. So we can't skip them obviously. Even here on the side of the bottle, there's certain even though it's all white, certain parts are darker. Darker, obviously we don't mean black, but 
if you compare them, if you had to make a scale, you would know that they are a bit darker than the rest. Okay, even here, for example, I'm trying to, even though it's all green, the shadow is over there like this. It's, the shadow is never a solid part. It's always going to be kind of in gradation, certain parts. It's uh, more pronounced than others, obviously depending on the material of the object. If the object is shiny, for example, like the tape, you get those sharp lines. Whereas a uh, matte surface, such as the brush and the paint bottle, would make a less you would make essentially less sharp lines, and the light is more diffused on them. Uh, for certain parts, for example, when I want it darker, I'm going to use the edge of the stick and kind of press more, and that tends to make a finer line, finer and obviously darker. You need to have patience, don't think that you'll uh, manage to do this uh, at once. Okay, so remember that uh, with, if I use the side, it's lighter, when you use the points, it's sharper. Also keep in mind that Charcoal cannot be sharpened like pencil, so you'll never get a very fine point. Uh, so obviously, um, to get the details that you would be able to get with pencil, you would need to use a much larger paper. In this case, uh, the paper is A3, so obviously the details would be limited, for example. Uh, here, I'm trying to build value slowly, slowly. And you'll notice that I'm using different parts of the charcoal, not just the edge or the side, but different parts of it. And obviously, this is, this. remember, this is willow charcoal. This is essentially a burnt piece of wood. So it won't be consistent in the sense um, that it's, always the same throughout. It will give different um, values. Uh, also, keep in mind that uh, charcoal is as much as building with, with the charcoal, as much as it's removing. You will constantly need to erase. Obviously, for this, we use a putty rubber. Uh, in my case here, I don't have a putty rubber. I'm using a normal eraser, it's not ideal, okay, it tends to smudge quite a bit, but this is what I have. What I do sometimes is I also use a wet wipe to remove uh, rather than just an eraser. Uh, what it does, it obviously use a small corner of it, don't use the whole thing. I like to cut it with scissors, um, but what it does is it blends it very softly, uh, similar to what the putty rubber does, but it becomes more painterly. This, of course, is completely optional, and feel free not to do this. This is just something I do. It's a personal preference. Uh, keep in mind that these values build up slowly, okay? You can't do it at one go. You will constantly need to put values, remove, uh, put charcoal again, remove, put charcoal again. And it's going to be like that till the end. You cannot kind of do it at one go. And again, you cannot expect certain details working on a small scale.
So for example here, using the very edge of the piece of charcoal, I'm building the bristles of the brush. See, to allow for the detail. Obviously here, uh, I'm trying to build the bottom of the bottle. Obviously using the edge because I need a sharp dark line in this case. The sharper I have it, so when I say sharp, it's obviously not with the pencil sharpener. Um, when you break it, usually it tends to have that edge, use that, or if for some reason you don't, in that case, um, uh, draw a bit on a piece of paper and uh, you'll, you'll have quite a sharp edge after that. Uh, again, keep in mind that uh, charcoal breaks very easily. Um, that's why I opt to have a small piece in my hand at one go, because when I, if I try to hold a longer piece, it's going to stay splitting while I'm drawing. So ideally, small piece, it's, it's just more convenient for me. Obviously, see what's convenient for you. Um, having messy hands is part of the job, so don't worry about that. Just obviously avoid touching the paper, especially when you see that uh, a lot of dust from the charcoal. Don't touch it, don't wipe it with your hands. Uh, when it gets too much and obviously you can't see, just blow so it goes away, but don't touch it. Otherwise, it will literally stain the entire paper. Now here, for example, I'm going to do that mark that I see over there. That part, even though white, but it's a bit more uh, pronounced than than the rest of uh, the bottle. For example, notice how I'm how I'm building the uh, shade the shadow is along the form of the object. Again, I'm not trying to uh, kind of do it randomly, but I'm following the form, and that would allow me to have a much more three D object besides. Uh, having the actual, uh, remember that the shadow, how it forms, will always be along the actual form of the object. It won't be randomly. So by trying to follow it, I will automatically have a better result.
For example, here you'll notice that the edge of the tape, because of uh, its details and how it is, it will be uh, quite a difficult part. Uh, the reason is because the charcoal is thick and cannot allow for certain details. Obviously, uh, like I said, uh, this is on A3, so we would work within it. Do not expect uh, photographic, uh, obviously, results, you know. Um, it shouldn't be like that. This is not the point of what we're working towards. What we're working towards is a good representation uh, of the objects and, obviously, its values and, and shadows. Remember that as much as you put on, at times you would need to remove. Okay, this will all be part of uh, the process. Uh, some of you might notice that, for example, drawing shadows with charcoal is perhaps a bit easier than uh, doing it with pencil because it, it allows for that diffuse uh, shadow uh, which, which is happening here, which perhaps with pencil, especially since a pencil can be sharpened, uh, it might be uh, slightly more difficult perhaps. Uh, charcoal by its very nature, tends to be uh, much more, you know, with that blurry character, which obviously makes sense for, for the shadow.
Uh, once we have the majority of the values in place, then we can really start with the details. Certain details uh, such as uh, sharp lines, you know, for example, in between the bristles, I can really, you know, start playing around and highlighting these things and making sure they are more clear. So when uh, you are ready, remember that uh, charcoal is a very volatile material, meaning that if you touch it, um, you can smudge it all over. So make sure that uh, you store it properly, uh, possibly put some fixative or hairspray so it doesn't smudge. And that's it. Well done on your drawing. Uh, obviously, 
uh, send me your drawings on Teams if you would like some feedback along with the photo of the still life uh, that you would be working on.